Greetings, everybody. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of Stationers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 7th. Uh, let me read a little bit about Stationers and then a little bit about the rules in case you haven't read it already. So Stationers is a game about the construction and management of space colonies or stations. It really depends on where you're going to be building, and I'm going to be building on Europa. Europa is a moon of Jupiter, one of the Galilean moons, and it is uh, very icy, cryovolcanic, although that doesn't occur in game, very, very cold. Uh, the game has you build complex systems of survival, like atmospheric, electrical, manufacturing, agricultural, etc. And there are more details about the series. I'll be playing on the Stationeer difficulty. So here is my settings for that. I have 50% hunger and hydration, because at 100%, oh man, you drink every few minutes. It's very annoying. And then uh, sudden orbit period is default one. Uh, there is some additional rules. So the additional rules is that I will not be building advanced furnaces, which severely limits my ability to get um, stage two alloys. So in the game, there's basic alloys like iron, copper, gold, and then there are sort of, you know, compound alloys or whatever. I don't know the right term like uh, Invar and, and solder. And then there are like more space age ones that allow you to unlock some of the high tech tier stuff. And that stuff is going to be pretty much impossible for me to obtain unless I do trading. And then also no integrated circuit chips. So no MIPS, no IC chips. Uh, both of these is so that the average viewer can more understand what I'm doing. If I get heavy into MIPS, uh, I'm going to lose a lot of you. And then the the goal is just to set up a self-sustaining outpost on Europa. It's a pretty straightforward goal. Uh, I am not playing on the beta branch. I'm playing on the dev build, which is... I don't even know what number it is. It's like... Uh, whatever. 2032, I think. Well, here, I could just look at the save. Oh, uh, 023036, blah, 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 blah. There, uh, and let's get started. I'm not actually going to be able to field a lot of questions at the start, because at the very start of the game, I'm going to have to uh, focus very solely on gameplay, as the first, uh, let's say, half an hour or so is going to be nail-biting. Uh, very easy to fail and have to restart. So I do have a death counter, which should be reading zero. Uh, so let's reset that to zero at the top left of the screen, as well as uh, the music that is currently playing. And yeah, in the title, it should be details. You are right. Thank you. Okay, so here's some details about Europa. The temperature is extraordinarily cold negative 149 to 140 Celsius. The solar energy is very low, only about 42% of Earth. And the solar angle is 32 degrees, which means it doesn't pass overhead. It passes like on a horizon, like if you lived in the Arctics. Um, the pressure is 45 kPa, mostly of oxygen, which is the only nice thing about Europa, I would say. And then gravity is 13% of Earth. So we can... Space Jam, I guess. And let's create a new game. And I really hope my my uh, starting RNG is not bad. So here we go. And I am also going to try to... Things are going to be going way too fast for me to fully explain what I'm doing to new players, but I'll try my best. So at the very start here... This is a new dawn. We're on Europa, and some of the uh, some of the biggest factors right now is running out of water. I'm going to need to hydrate, but on stationary difficulty, I have to take my helmet off to hydrate, or at least I have to flip up the visor, which means it's not exactly a safe thing to do. So the first project I'm going to be working on as you can see above my head, is basic survival. What basic survival means is ideally an environment that won't kill me <laughs> so that I can take my first sip of water, which means that we need to enclose a space. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be grabbing iron frames and slapping them down where I think 
will be a good place for initial footprint, but I can't spend all that time picking that place because every second counts. And that's why I have the game paused right now. So here we go. My lander is floating. Whoa, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna pull the plug on this one and go with <clears throat> a new game that doesn't have my lander flying off. <laughs> that happens sometimes. All right, let's see. That does not count as a death count, by the way. Just, uh, I just want a nice lander that has landed. It's not a orbiter, it is a lander. Should be on the ground. Okay, this one's on the ground, cool. And it seems pretty flat around me, which is a comfort. So I'm gonna grab in the iron frames. I'm also gonna be sticking some of the things in my belt here uh, back inside. Let's keep the duct tape. And this looks remarkably flat. So I don't know the direction of the sun at rise, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be laying out a little three by three, and then I'll figure out where the sun rise comes up. Although the likelihood of this three by three being my initial farm is very low. So to that end, let's go ahead with the full structure. So that um, higher part is going to be the airlock. And that there is the initial layout of my... Let's make it a little larger. But this is the initial layout of my base. Done. Next up, going to grab my welder and weld these pieces. Because right now they're just frames with no... No clipping. And like I said, I'm going to be whipping through this very fast because this is sort of like a speed run or I die. And I don't like dying, so. So where I'm standing now will be the inside of the base. Now one of the constraints of Europa is that because it's so cold, it somewhat destroys batteries. Uh, by that I mean it's, uh, let me lower master volume a little bit. Batteries lose charge very, very quickly in the extreme cold. I might have lowered that a bit too much. Okay, and let's fix that. All right, so there we go. We have uh, sort of a platform. I'm going to go grab some other things. So, uh, let's see. I want consoles, pipes. Doors. Sol generator, arc furnace. So the arc furnace is how I'm going to initially smelt stuff. I'm going to stick this bad boy here. Very simple. Uh, for solid generator, this is a way to burn coal for power. I'm going to stick that there. Solid generators aren't that uh, efficient at their job until you get a kit battery, which means before I get a kit battery, I need um, steel. So you'll see me probably very limitedly use that thing. Alright, so next step is to get some windows going. And I think I'm actually going to stop this task right now. While I have sunlight, I'm going to grab some initial resources. So I'm looking mostly for iron, copper, and gold with a little bit of coal mixed in. One really important thing is I don't have the beacon on, so I need to remember the direction of my base. Oh, don't do this bug to me. Really? Already? Where I can't see... Oh, there it goes. So I would say, like, 70 iron is going to be enough. And I'm going to need iron to just print things like other printers and walls and sheets and, and the like.
Alright, that's probably good. Now, the hunt for gold. That, that shiny thing right in the middle of my screen might have been gold. Oh, here's some gold. Sometimes in terrain generation, you'll have like one little piece of gold sitting on the surface, and then like there's no other gold around it. And for whatever reason, my, um... Oh, no, there it goes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna want something like 15, 20 gold. Thereabouts. I don't need tons of it. It takes uh, considerably longer to mine up than iron. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reveal some of the gold in the ground so I can find it later more easily. So I'll just dig around it. And there we go. 26 gold. That's enough. Next up, copper. There's nickel and uranium. Uranium's worthless to me. But nickel will be helpful later on. So I'll make note that nickel's about zero degrees from the base, maybe 150 meters out. In no way will I remember that. Uh, more gold, more iron. Come on. That might be oxide up there. Very useful once I have a furnace. So I am, if I ever get lost, the giant mountain. My base is 270 degrees from this giant mountain here. That's a pretty good landmark. I'm gonna want some coal. I know it makes no sense that there'd be coal on Europa. Uh, but think of it as just like carbon deposits, if that helps your brain. And if it doesn't help your brain, I don't really care. It's a video game. <laughs> Come on! That might be silver. Oh man, copper's gonna kill me. Silver will be useful later on as well, but not yet. Is this silver? No, this isn't silver. That's cobalt. Wow, RNG is rough. It's, uh, needless to say, it's not usually this hard to find copper. Oh, that might be some right there. I'm getting pretty far away from the base and the sun is getting low. Oh, is that silicon? Oh, silicon. Might as well grab it. I'm gonna need a little bit of it later. Really early on, you're gonna need to make an ice crusher, and ice crushers rely on silicon. So it's not terrible to have, but I don't need a ton of it. Holy smokes, this map has so much gold. Oh, here's some copper. Come on, terrain. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is... I'm turning off smooth terrain because it's like bugging out on me and I can't see where I'm digging. So I want roughly, let's say, like 50 copper or so. Should be good. And then I'll head back and start wiring everything up. Really early on, you're going to want to probably dig by day, build by night. It's going to be a little bit harder for you to see what you're doing, but there's virtually no way that you'll be able to easily navigate without beacons and trackers. And really early on, you don't have the power for beacons and trackers. So you got to be mindful of the time of day. All right. I have 50 now, 53. All right, 60 is going to have to do. How does Europa compare with other planets or, or celestial bodies difficulty-wise? Um, it is... Hmm. It's easier in many respects because of its uh, prevalent... Oxygen. So having an oxygenated base is rather easy, but it's so frigid that you need to spend a lot of power to heat your base. So I don't know. It's it's about on par. It's probably a little bit harder than Mars, I'd say. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start to wire up the arc furnace so I can start smelting this stuff. 
So for that, I'm going to grab the plastic, the glass, Uh, the auto lathe, the power controllers. I'm going to stick this power controller indoors. There. And the auto lathe oddly indoors as well. Oddly, because a lot of the times when people build bases, they stick that stuff outdoors. Uh, Alright, so... Additional iron windows. And these don't hold back the air just yet. I have to continue constructing them. They need iron and glass placed in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run out of iron sheets, but that's fine because I'll start printing up iron. So that's all of the... Um, I'm going to reserve the iron that I have on me for... Um, for building other things. So, next up, let me get the large battery so I can start um, start printing. And my suit battery is about 50%. My hydration's just north of 50%. So you can see the, the timer ticking away on my life. So this area power controller, I'm gonna stick the battery in in just a minute. And then, power comes out this end. So building some cables, eventually this auto lathe will get powered up and built, but first I want the, the smelter going. So then for the smelter, let me actually change the layout of the, well, no, cables on the wall is fine. I'm not going to go, I'm not attempting for aesthetically pleasing uh, base designs at all. It's uh, so very low on my concern list. All right, I'm moving the auto lathe. Or the, uh, the solid generator, just to put this thing a little closer, uh, so that it is easier for me to power it up with a shorter cable run. Okay, so now that that is plugged in, put the cables away, grab the mining belt. First thing I'm going to mine, or first thing I'm going to smelt, is the iron. And let's flick this on. Stick the battery in it. And processing. So now while that goes, uh, let me dump the ores out. For future processing, so I can switch belts. I know that you can have the belt open, so iron sheets is what makes the auto lathe. Let me grab the iron sheets. You do have um, seven days of um, grace period before your first storm, so I'm not designing for the first storm just yet. And then I need the plastic sheets, which on my person. And there we go. Now we have an auto lathe. Now this auto lathe, the first thing I'm going to make in this auto lathe is the uh, electronics printer. So I need iron, gold, and copper for that. Which is exactly why I went with the arc furnace first. So I have the iron for it. I'm only going to get uh, maybe four gold of the gold that I had smelted. So I put in, what, 27? 26, maybe? Three gold's fine. I'll get one more gold later. And then copper. Just so that I can start printing up the printer sooner. So, although it is uh, terribly power inefficient, initially I'm going to put the solid fuel generator indoors uh, to power up this, um, this APC. And then I will eventually move it out with a kit battery attached. But I can, although this thing outgasses poisonous gases, 
Uh, initially, what is going to be beneficial is it will produce heat for me. And I'm going to have really ugly cabling because these cables are temporary. And again, um, I'm racing against time, so I'm not really able to answer questions at this moment. You just have to bear with me. So here we go. Now we can charge that battery if I throw coal in. And we'll know when it flashes blue and uh, green instead of blue and red. It's charging. So there we go. Now we're charging. But I'm not actually going to run that until I have... Um, until I have my walls built. And then the window's on. And ceilings. I'd like to start to capture the heat. I'm definitely going to run out of iron sheets here. That's why I have the auto lathe. So print up some iron sheets. And I'm starting to get hydration warnings. Which is an indicator that uh, I'm going to need, need to take a sip of water soon. So just frantically running around making sure that uh, I've installed everything. All right, ceilings look good. Now these here don't hold air either, so that's gonna have to be remedied. I'm probably gonna remove them later on. Oh, hi iron floating there. Okay, next up, glass. I like bases that use a lot of windows so that you can get, when the sun's up, you can actually see what you're doing. I think I am enclosed other than the door. So, building the door real quick, which also, again, glass. And at this point, I think I am sealed. Uh, I will know if I grab my tablet and it reads as a room. So I'll do that in just a minute. Here comes the sun. So here, the electronics burner coming out. I don't have enough gold to make two of them. So my tablet here, let's stick the Atmo analyzer. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. And yes, room 24, so it means it's enclosed. If I was not uh, enclosed, it would read like this. So here is room. I'm in the world now. Because this isn't sealed. So this room is now sealed. And. What that means is. I can work towards. Uh, removing the pollutants and volatiles so I can take a first breath. Sort of. A first drink, more like. So next up, let's grab... Um, data disk, sensors, that can come. I'm not using that just yet. Pipes. I'm eventually going to, want to build an airlock, but I'm not quite at that point yet. What I really want is... Um, Labeler and airlock. Oh, I'm out of space. Scumdog, thanks for the uh, the sub. I'll get to chat once I'm not in a panicked hurry.
All right, so the battery that's in the APC is uh, very low. So I have a very limited amount of time to be able to do this before running out of power. So let me, let me hurry. All right, last thing I want is a scrubber. So portal scrubber and a uh, battery. I want to try to scrub the X or the volatiles, the, the pollutants and volatiles out of the room um, before taking a breath. But that means getting filters that I don't have yet. So I'll probably not be able to do that, which means instead, let me just go ahead and close this. Here's my printer. Just powering up that battery. And the next thing I want to print up is the pipe bender. So I need one more gold smelted. But uh, I'm going to do a very risky, quick sip of water here in just a second. So to read the current... The current... Um, room there is less than one percent of x so if i'm quick i should limit the amount of lung damage that i get so here we go open and drink and close flush lock done All right, I've gone through all of my coal already. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's get that pipe bender online and then get some more coal to keep us afloat. So looking for the, the coal. I am uh, not missing one window. It would not have, I don't think. Now that it's light out, I can look. All sides are done. Oh, yep. Yeah, no, you're right. I got a hole right above the uh, the printer here. Actually, missing two windows. All right, now I'm fully sealed. Cool. All right, off to coal, or I'm gonna run out of power and die. So the reason why a solid generator is really inefficient until you get coal is because the solid generator generates way more power than the APC can receive. So it's ideal to have a kit battery on it. Also, I think it's now a good time that I do indeed have the backseat gaming tag, no backseat gaming tag on in case you weren't looking at the gaming tags. This is a game I haven't played in uh, almost a year, and um, I'd rather just struggle on my own than get backseated. There's too much going on for me to even address the comments in the back seats anyway. I will, however, hydrate. And give Yoda a long overdue treat. Right, buddy? <laughs> Whoa! Let's not throw that around. Oh, that's funny. I just grabbed the battery out of it as I tossed it. Is this backseating allowed? It shouldn't. That's odd. I think my tag's reset. There you go. I gotta say, the RNG of the materials that I found here... They suck. I'll get the scanner out next time I come out for mining. I just thought I could find uh, coal quickly. But that is not the case. Come on, coal. I could have just gone to where I initially found some and, and dug up that node. Oh well. That would have been faster.
You know, how was that treat? Was it good? <laughs> He's just staring at me. Why is there so much gold? Ah, uh, it looks like coal. And... Oh, there we go. Thought it was going to be that same terrain bug again. Now, on the beta branch, there's a lot of, like, performance uh, improvements that have been... being made, but the beta branch is, like, also incredibly unstable to the point where streaming it is, like, um, a little nutty because it's not going to work very well. Which is why I'm not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. I would even say that their, uh, their release branches tend to be pretty buggy, but this release branch, the branch I'm playing on, is the same branch from, like, last October. Nothing really significant has changed in the game uh, on the development release branch since October. So... This is about as stable as it gets. All right, that's probably enough coal. Let's get back home. Yeah, it's still a buggy mess. The, the game in general is a buggy mess. There's so many multiplayer bugs and problems. Um, I think it can be good and might be good multiplayer someday. I've, I've actually played a lot of this multiplayer and uh, let me tell you, it is frustrating. You have to have a high tolerance for glitches and bugs, like playing on Mars and all of a sudden the atmosphere disappears and you're on moon and you're walking around the same base everybody else is, but your game thinks you're on the moon and, <laughs> and you're actually on Mars. Yeah, that is, oh, that's not where that belongs. That's a real bug. Those things happen and they're obnoxious. Yeah, multiplayer is a is a wreck. All right, I'm gonna seal the last three uh, sheets in here. So let me print up a few more sheets. Grab that gold I wanted, and let's go for the pipe bender. Actually, a few more sheets because I'm gonna want to build the electronics printer too. So five is enough for now. If you change the recipe, it won't print more than one. All right. So electronics printers next. Now the reason I'm sealing these floors is it actually lowers the volume of the base because now air can't flow into the floors. Uh, and the benefit of that is the lower the volume, the easier it will be to heat. Giant, expansive bases are very, very hard to heat. So I'm trying to avoid that. All right, let's uh, start working on this airlock. So I'll put a gas sensor here. And the data disk. Last. Now it's a little bit warmer in the base than it is outside because of the um, the coal generator I got going on, but I don't have the ability to actually heat the base and airlock and cycle and all that, so I'm just not doing it just yet. But I will, however, move this APC to just over in the corner. I'm not really using it. So the hydraulic pipe bender will allow me to build most of what's left in order to set up a an airtight base that can keep its um, oxygen in. Whoa. Oh, yeah, no filters loaded. Don't know why I turned that on. I'm going to need to empty that out at some point. Okay, 
Okay, so that is 68% done. Let me start working on the piping then. The plumbing for the airlock. It's getting dark, so I'm not really going to be able to travel easily. So the labelers needed to make an airlock, or not needed, but like, it's nice to have, because without a labeler, you're not going to know what you're interacting with. I guess I'll grab the battery charger, although I'm not likely to hook it up initially. And then over here, we've got the pipes, and I guess I'll grab the tracking beacon. Wouldn't hurt to have on me. So at the moment, I just have a manually cycled airlock, which obviously doesn't really work all that well. But it's better than nothing. It's like 30 degrees warmer in this room than it would be outside. Coal ran out, but the battery filled up. And here is that pipe bender. Let's get that pipe bender hooked up. The other thing I'm probably going to need is uh, to print up some cables, because I don't think I'm going to even have enough cables to run out to the pipe bender. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe just. Nope, I'm one shy. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Then I'm going to need two sheets. Two iron sheets. Four cables. Plastic. Screwdriver, done. Mark one pipe bender. All right, next thing I need is an act event and two pass events. That's pretty much all I need to print up for the airlock. And then, to remove the pollutants in the room, I'm also going to need filters. One and... I'm not going to worry about filtering the room until I actually have a sealed airlock, though. So then this act event goes here. Oh, where'd my pipes go? I, I dropped them, didn't I? Helps to have the thing that you need to build. If you're wondering why I have such a snaky um, pipe path, it's so that there is volume in the pipe. The, so that when I, um, I call to cycle the airlock, there is air in the pipe already, and it will help cycle the airlock a little faster. Just throw that out. 
Alright, that can turn off. Um, next up is to print up some cables, because I don't have enough cabling to wire this up. But uh, this is all that I need for the airlock until I get those cables. So let's get those cables printed. But before I do that, um, vol and pollution. Kebakoi, thank you for the uh, the sub. So this vol and, and um, pollutant filter will allow me to set up the air scrubber to scrub the things that I don't want in my atmosphere. Does this delete the... Uh, the... Yes, it does. Okay, cool. I now know how to delete gas. Alright. Uh, let's dump that copper out. Oh, there's a spare sheet. And print up some cable coils. So these cable coils will allow me to wire up this stuff. So that's for the... battery charger. But right now the battery charger just pulls from this battery. I don't have any power generation yet. So it doesn't make sense to actually hook that battery charger up. And I'm getting hydration warnings again, but that's fine. I'm getting to a point where I'll be able to actually address hydration. Where's the three-way corner? Here it is. So an advanced airlock needs a console, uh, a gas sensor to sense how much gas is still in the airlock so it knows when its cycling is done. That might be enough. And then vents. So this is the advanced airlock setup. And then you need to, uh, well, you don't need to, but you should probably label the things so you know what does what. Outside and inside doors, outside and inside vents. So, looks like uh, everything's powered on, so let's get labeling. So this is the out composite door. The in composite door. The in active vent and the out active vent and airlock gas sensor I guess airlock console these two don't really need to be labeled at least not right now but that's fine so let's set it up the external KPA will say 20 the internal will say 40 that should allow us to cycle it quicker so the out vent, the in vent, the outdoor, the indoor, the gas sensor. What about a bing done? Uh, I need to stick this data disk somewhere. Um, where can I stick a data disk? They like removed all the data disk slots. Well, I'll hold on to it for now. So then the next thing that I could do is um, power my air scrubber on so that I can have cleaner air. So if we take a look at the um, the tablet here, the X and the H2 should start to disappear as this air scrubber is pulling them from the atmosphere. And when the X goes down to less than 1%, it's um, safer for me to breathe. Not completely safe, but safer. Uh, so let's cycle. And I'm going to put some of the um, stuff I don't want on me away to free up some space. So then what, what's happening here is the air in the airlock is getting pushed back into the base. And then air from outside is getting pushed into the airlock. And I've cycled and I'm through. 
So we have airlock. All right, let me update my priority. Um, heat the base. So my initial heating of the base is uh, going to be very rudimentary, and then eventually I'm going to get like a higher tech way to heat the base. So any veteran of the game probably sees what I'm about to do, and you're like, oh yeah, that will heat it. But another thing I'm going to do is to um, power the base up as well, because uh, I'm relatively low on power. So let's cycle. So it's taking the air, the outside air, and pumping it through this vent outside, and then taking air from in the base and pumping it into the airlock. If you don't do that, oh, what ends up happening is you get like a whoosh of air that hits you real fast when you have a pressurized base. All right, operation heat. So what I'm doing, this is a little cheap and weird, is I'm just setting a whole bunch of road flares off. Road flares um, produce heat, but don't out gas. Don't ask me how. Seems impossible, I know. It's like a clean oxygen candle, I guess. Something. But yeah, that'll heat this place up a little bit. Uh, let's take a quick look. It's also going to kill my frame rates because of vol volumetric um, rendering. But you can see the temperature going up. And with the temperature, the pressure goes up. And X is coming down. And there's no H2 in it anymore. Also, that Trek and Beacon should be... Oh, it was off. It's just hard to tell because of the retina burning lights. I will um, burn a little bit more coal. So also burning... Whoa. You went through all that coal that quick? Alright, hydration critical. Uh, let's see here. Set up for a... Oh, that's my credit card. Set up for a quick sip. So, unlock the helmet. Open drink. Close. I don't need to flush it because there's really not... Well, I'll flush. Just this once. But eventually, I'm not going to need a flush because there's not um, gases in the base that my filters in my suit wouldn't deal with. I just I just want to make sure that there wasn't any H2 that got caught in the... No, actually, I'm not in an environment of H2, so yeah, I didn't need a flush. The carbon dioxide that was in my helmet from opening it up would have been flushed by the filters. Alright, so that part is done. Uh, next up, we probably want to get a furnace. So let me update that. So a furnace is going to allow us to make alloys like steel. And steel is required in order to... Um, steel is required in order to, like, do everything that's cool in the game. So, yep. Steel is the next big one. Uh, my labeler can go away. And then this time I'm going to actually grab my ore scanner. Also, all of my building materials doesn't need to come with me. So I'm not going anywhere where I'm going to need it. So here's an ore scanner and then the ore scanner cartridge. And I guess I'll be showing you in just a second how to use a ore scanner. While well, the base heats itself. It's not going to heat itself to the point where um, anything blows up or ruptures or anything like that. So in order to use this, drop it, turn it on, grab your tablet, hit the scan button, open the tablet, and you can now see where ores are being detected. So obviously there's ores where I can physically see them, but this allows you to see, I don't know the radius off the top of my head, but it's a pretty decent radius. And uh, what I'm gonna try to do is get some iron and copper for my furnace, and then iron and coal for my first batch of steel. 
Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have it so that uh, I build a kit battery. Um, so that I can store the power from the solid generator. And then after I have the solid generator uh, powering up a kit battery, that will allow me to then spend the extra time to get renewable resources. I think what I'm probably going to do on this planet is wind. Um, Europa does have storms, and because I don't allow for an advanced furnace in this series... Um, I'm going to use my scanner. Yep, there's still stuff here. Uh, because I don't allow for a uh, an advanced furnace in the series, I won't have stormproof solar panels unless I like build walls around them. So I'm just going to try for the wind and then maybe other power generation methods later on. God, where is this? Oh, it's beneath me. So for my first batch of steel, I'm probably going to want uh, 150 iron and 50 coal. But then I'm going to need some extra coal just to keep the lights on in the base. And then some extra iron to make the furnace itself. So I'm looking for maybe like 200 iron and 75 coal. Thereabouts. And yeah, I'll be able to eventually trade for the stuff I can't make. Um, the special alloys and the like. Once I get a... a lightning pad and communications console and all that jazz up. This node of iron does not seem particularly rich. Oh, and I'm definitely not digging towards it. The flashlight on your suit uh, sucks like a lot of power. But also because of how frigid the um, the planet is, or the moon rather is, uh, that requires a sizable amount of power to keep you heated and um, and comfortable. Posture check, you got it. Thank you for tuning in to Stationers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch. April 7th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that I played with the no backseating tag enabled, so I'm not really looking for gameplay mechanic suggestions. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and Countdown Timers to upcoming streams, as well as links to Discord and Twitch. If you'd like this series and want more of it, make sure to vote for it when it comes up in the polls. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.